a visit to Mars, a base on the moon, and the creation of their very own space station. China's space ambitions are undoubtedly skyrocketing, literally. Now, China has revealed a new energy source that could empower all their endeavors and change the landscape of space exploration forever. How did China produce such an impossible power source? Is it true that it can power up to 10 international space stations? If you are new to this channel, if this video gives you any value at all, please click the like and subscribe button, because that would really help us out to go ahead and pump out new videos for you guys. The Chinese National Space Administration has been steadily carving its name alongside the United States and Russia as the new powerhouse in the space industry. With China joining the conversation for space supremacy, the space race has been revamped, and it is fiercer than ever. Everyone wants a piece of space, and China is looking like it's one step ahead. The modern space race started way earlier than you think, way back in 2011, when the rift between the US and China grew larger as the US banned China from boarding the International Space Station. And not just that, they also banned China from collaborating on any of its space projects. The reason? The US government is afraid that China has been secretly gathering intel about the United States' space ambitions and that China will use its space program to transform itself into a military, economic, and technological power. Of course, NASA and the US do not want that, right? Well, it might be too late. China has been making moves in space ever since. Let's just say that China is ready to retaliate. In the span of just one decade, China has turned itself into a space giant. In September 2011, the year they got banned from the ISS, China launched their very first prototype space station, which orbited Earth for seven days, gathering much-needed data on how the Chinese National Space Administration, or CNSA, can carry out their very own space station. Just two years later, in 2013, China set their sights on the moon, as the widely anticipated Chang'e 3 probe landed on the moon, deploying the U-2 rover to inspect the composition of the soil and the structure of the lunar crust beneath it. Chang'e once again returned to the moon six years later in 2019, where it became the very first spacecraft to make a soft landing on the far side of the moon. China's space success just kept piling up, as the CNSA's Tianwen-1 spacecraft set down on Mars with the Zirong rover, completing China's first landing on another planet. But out of all of that, arguably the greatest achievement in the history of the Chinese space industry is the completion of its very own space station, when the CNSA completed the construction of the Tiangong Space Station in November 2022. For the CNSA, this is just the start. The start of a new age of space explorations. Their ambitions are limitless. But in space, ambitions are not enough. You need to back them up with exceptional tech, and China did just that, as the CNSA revealed their new power source that could power up 10 international space stations. With China introducing a game-changing space power source, many were wondering, how powerful is it compared to the conventional power sources we use today? In today's space endeavors, spacecraft and space stations are powered by only two things, one of which is the more popular solar panel. Harnessing the power of the sun has become the norm for us here on Earth. It's easy, just place some solar panels to harness the energy from the sun and you're good to go. The sun provides limitless, clean power every moment of every day. There are zero carbon emissions that can hurt our planet. Take the International Space Station, for example. Each solar array wing of the ISS is the largest ever deployed in space, weighing over 2,400 pounds and using 33,000 solar arrays. Each of the two solar array wings of the ISS is capable of generating nearly 31 kilowatts of direct current power, enough to power the entire ISS. Of course, the power of the sun can be harnessed if you are close enough to it. But what about explorations further than the sun? What source of power did these spacecrafts use to survive on the outskirts of the solar system? Three letters, RTG, or radioisotope thermoelectric generators. A bit harder to memorize than solar energy, right? But RTGs are extraordinarily reliable. But how do RTGs provide power to our spacecraft? RTGs provide electrical power using heat from the natural radioactive decay of plutonium-238 in the form of plutonium dioxide. 
The large difference in temperature between this hot fuel and the cold environment of space is applied across special solid-state metallic junctions called thermocouples, which generate an electrical current using no moving parts. RTGs are used on NASA missions where other options, such as solar power, are impractical or incapable of providing the power that a mission may need to accomplish its scientific or operational goals. More than two dozen U.S. space missions have used RTGs since their first use in 1961. The most famous spacecraft to ever use RTG is Voyager, which was the very first spacecraft to reach interstellar space. But besides these two power sources, the solar panels and RTG, China now has its very own power source, which is tens of times, if not hundreds of times, more powerful than the power sources we have today. China has made a move that has made NASA worried. They are exploring the use of a more efficient and powerful nuclear reactor in space. China's Ministry of Science and Technology has approved a space nuclear reactor project aiming to generate a megawatt of electricity. Yes, you heard that right, a megawatt. That could power 400 to 1,000 homes per year. That's enough space power to keep the equivalent of 10 international space stations going. Remember earlier when I talked about the energy sources NASA is using? Well, both of them have all sorts of problems. First, solar power is obviously inefficient when reaching areas that are far from the sun. What about the RTG? What's the problem with it? Well, RTGs only produce a trickle of power and leak so much radiation that they aren't suitable for crewed missions. These are all problems that a nuclear reactor would solve. Nuclear reactors, on simple terms, are the heart of a nuclear power plant. They contain and control nuclear chain reactions that produce heat through a physical process called fission. That heat is used to make steam, which spins a turbine to create electricity. Now, China is planning to put this nuclear reactor in a space. There's a lot of secrecy going around this ambitious Chinese space nuclear reactor program, which implies that there is no government regulation or law on cleanup if there is an accident. There is one thing we know about this nuclear reactor program, though. Its name, Helsinki. The project was initiated in 2019, and NASA has no idea how near or far China has gone through this project. NASA Administrator Bill Nelson warned in July 2020 that China was planning to take over the moon using this powerful nuclear reactor. However, the use of nuclear reactors in space poses some problems, too. What if the launch vehicle explodes? What if the reactor seizes in space? You need to ensure it doesn't melt down and kills the crew. And what if a lander equipped with one crashes? The nuclear reactor will likely contaminate the world on which it landed. This is why NASA does not yet have this kind of technology for spacecraft. The engineering problem has proved too daunting for them. However, NASA is already considering incorporating this into their rockets. But even so, NASA may not acquire this vital power source until the end of the decade, and it seems like China will beat them to this milestone. For the first time in many decades, NASA is lagging behind, and the war for a piece of space is intensifying.